And we're back with part two of Intro to Modular Synthesis. Last video, we covered control voltage, the magical element that makes modular synthesis so magical. Now for the fun part, the modules. In this video, we'll take a look at all the modules you need to create both an East and West Coast style patch. We'll take a look at what each module does and how it all works, and we'll patch them up as we go. But before we get into the modules, I just wanted to talk really quickly about sequencers because we're not going to really be going too deep into that in this video. Regardless of what patch style you're using, you're likely to be using a sequencer of some sort that's going to be sending the volt per octave data and the gate or trigger data to your synthesizer. Now, these sequencers can come in all sorts of different forms. For this video, I'm going to be using the Arturia Keystep because it's just a simple keyboard that has sequencing capabilities that you could send sequences out into your Eurorack easily. Now, there are Eurorack modules that are sequencers. There are other outboard units that are great sequencers. There are modules that you can input MIDI from your DAW into your Eurorack. So there's all sorts of options that basically you're looking for is that volt per octave and that gate or trigger. And I won't be going in depth about sequencers because each one is so unique and different and has its own capabilities and feature sets that it's not worth going into in a video like this. But just know that's the extra little additional thing you have to think about in addition to the modules I'll be talking about in this video. First, we're going to take a look at an East Coast patch as it's the most straightforward, and then we'll take a look at a West Coast style patch afterwards. So to start with the East Coast patch, also known as a Moog style patch or subtractive synthesis, was developed by Bob Moog in the 1970s, and it takes a harmonically rich waveform and removes harmonics via the filter to round the sound out to give it a more natural sound, to imitate real-world instruments, which is what Bob Moog's intent was. So subtracting harmonic content, thus a subtractive synthesis synthesizer. So to start, we need an oscillator. For this, we're going to be using Bosk by Afterlater Audio. And a special thanks to Afterlater Audio, again, for providing some modules for this video. So to start, we need the sound source, the oscillator. With the oscillator, we have four waveforms. We have a sine wave, triangle wave, a sawtooth wave, and a pulse wave with pulse width modulation, which zeroes out. And that's all the outputs on the module. But we get all this control with these four inputs. First, we have the coarse tune knob, which gives us coarse tuning control over a large handful of octaves. And then we have our fine tune knob, which gives us more fine tune control to tune our oscillator, which let's do right now. Let's tune it to C2 because zero volts in the volt per octave right now is nothing, is gonna give us a C. So we tune to a C, and then we can input our volt per octave, which I have coming from the Arturia key step. So here we can see our sequence playing from the Arturia key step, and that's going into the volt per octave of Bosk. Now if we choose to use our pulse output, we can then take, say, an LFO, which I'll take from this first channel of curve here, and 
plug that into the pulse width modulation input. Which it looks like this pulse width modulation knob turns into an attenuator for the pulse width modulation input once there's something plugged into the jack here. So we have just a positive wave LFO going into the PWM pulse width modulation input here to give us that nice width to our sound, nice movement to it. Frequency modulation can give us interesting results. The more we turn it up, and I have a faster LFO going into the FM input here, and the more I turn it up, the more it's going to affect our pitch. And it depends on the speed of our LFO gives us interesting effects. Some not as good as others. It's a nice way to get some flutter in your sound or some vibrato as well. It's nice and all, but we need to now cut our sound. Since it sounds so harsh, we're going to run it through this filter, which is the second module we'll cover here. Filthy. By Afterlighter Audio. So to patch the filter, I'm going to take the output of our rich waveform, the pulse wave here, that had the pulse width being modified by the LFO, and we're going to patch this output into the input on Filthy. And we'll patch the output, starting with the low pass filter, into our oscilloscope here. So we can see our base waveform here is that pulse wave being with the width being modified. And as we turn the cutoff down, it's going to only let the low frequencies pass through, thus a low pass filter, cutting out the upper harmonics. So it's going to round off these waveforms, turning it into a sine wave. Then we can give it resonance, which gives it little peaks at the edges of the harmonics. That gives it a little bit extra oomph in the sound. We can plug the LFO into our filter frequency cutoff, and it makes things quite a bit more interesting than just adjusting the pulse width. So this is a low pass filter. Then we have a band pass filter, which cuts off the upper and lower harmonics of this frequency, giving us just that middle EQ sound. And we can adjust where that middle is with our cutoff. And then the resonance again adds resonance to our sound. And note, if we turn the resonance up all the way, we get a sine wave. That's because some filters can self-resonate with the resonance, creating a sine wave. Back to our oscillator. And let's look at the high-pass filter which lets the high frequencies pass, and it cuts out the lower harmonics. So we can see what it's doing to our square wave, and how it kind of turns it into this interesting houndstooth wave. Because it's cutting out the bass, big bass curve in the frequency. And then on this filter, we also have our notch output, which is basically the opposite of a bandpass, and it cuts out a small notch frequency and lets everything else pass through. It's also kind of like a really simple phaser or a flanger. Now 
now let's take a listen to this with our sequence. And let's stick with the low pass for this patch. Now this is great, but we still don't have any dynamics to the sound, which is where the envelope generator and the VCA will come into play. Now we already pretty much covered the envelope generator in the first video with our envelope section of CV, so we're going to jump to the VCA next. So now we're going to send our low pass filter output into the input on DVCA by After Later Audio, which is just a two-channel version of Mutable Instruments Veils VCA, which is a quad VCA. We're going to patch our output back into the oscilloscope here. Now right now, since nothing is patched to our CV input, this just acts as an attenuator, or just basically a volume knob, for the VCA here, which opens and closes our VCA. And that's basically what we're going to be doing with our envelope. So I'm going to patch... So I'm going to patch my gate into the trigger input here on Baker in the envelope mode, and it's going to give us just an ADSR envelope. I'm going to plug that output into the input on the VCA. So now it has closed our VCA, and this acts as an attenuator for the signal going in. And we don't need to worry about these knobs right now. Right now, the envelope is kind of a plinkier sound, and let's hear how this sounds with our sequence. So right now, our envelope is just opening up our VCA, allowing the sound to come through. So you can see if I do something more harsh here, we can see how it's obviously cutting our sound off, thus giving us dynamics in the sound with an envelope into the VCA, or Voltage Controlled Amplifier, or Attenuator. Now really, the only thing we need to add to make this a fully subtractive East Coast Moog style patch is taking one of these stackable cables here and taking our envelope output and splitting it from our VCA and also inputting it into our filter. And now with this will open up our filter as it opens up our VCA at the same time, giving it a more natural sound to more organic sounding instruments. Or not so organic. Now you then run this patch through some effects like some delay or clouds for example, and you could get some really interesting unique sounds from this really simple patch style. And we could get a variety of sounds again by just changing our oscillator wave. Here's a saw wave. Sine wave. And let's go high pass filter on the sine wave. And turn our envelope negative with this attenuverter here, which is like the attenuator, but it also applies it in a negative fashion, as i.e. just flipping it on the oscilloscope here and giving us a negative envelope voltage, which is turning our knob this way instead of that way. And let's hear a notch filter.
we could hear really that flanger phaser sound coming through with this patch. And that's our Moog style or subtractive synthesis patch. Then we'll look at the wave folder and low pass gate for our West Coast style synthesis. Let's get this all unpatched and re patch it up. Okay, now for a West Coast patch style, otherwise known as an additive synth or a Buchla style synth, because this was invented by Don Buchla around the same time as Bob Moog, except on the West Coast instead of on the East Coast. Now, his style of music wasn't meant to replicate instruments or anything like that. It was meant to be more experimental. So this is a bit more plinky, bloopy, bleepy sort of synthesis as opposed to a more pronounced instrument sound. Now to start, we're gonna start with a basic waveform because this is additive synthesis. So we're gonna start with just a sine wave. And I'm not gonna go through the sine wave, just bass into there, cause we already covered that. So I'm gonna go straight into the next step here, which is plugging the sine wave into our wave folder, which I'm gonna just use input one here on Valley by Afterlater Audio, which is a mixer and a wave folder, but we're gonna be just using the wave folder side. So I have this turned to input one. So I have it just on the fold side and we'll plug our fold output into the oscilloscope. So here we have our base sine wave. As we can see, it's already being wave folded a little bit. And as we turn up what's called order, or just the wave fold amount on most Buchla style wave folders, what it does is it increases the gain on our wave until it hits that max point, at which point it turns around and starts going the other way. And then it hits again and goes the other way again and hits again and bounces again, thus folding our waveform and giving us added harmonics into the sound. And this is why it's called additive synthesis because we are adding harmonics with the wave folder as opposed to subtracting with a filter. Now odd even kind of acts similar to pulse width modulation with our pulse wave, where it just moves the phase of our waveform within there and it gives us a different timbre. Now let's plug our sequence back into the oscillator. Again, that's great, but we need some dynamics with it, which is where the low pass gate is gonna come in. So we're gonna plug our wave folder output into the input on our low pass gate. And then the low pass gate output will come into our oscilloscope. Now we need to trigger this with a trigger, or we could put CV in and use it like a VCA. But for this instance, I'm gonna just use a trigger or our gates coming from the key step sequencer. And let's play our sequence. So what the low pass gate is doing is filtering our sound off. Instead of closing our sound off like a VCA, it closes it off like a filter. So we have some resonance in that cutoff frequency and the cutoff frequency goes below audible range, thus closing our VCA when it's off and we can control our decay time from shorter, plinky, to longer, a little more drawn out notes. Now it's worth noting that low pass gates use what's called a vactral in the back of the module, which is basically an LED and a light sensitive pad of some sort that the LED flashes and the pad will then open up the filter and the VCA. And as the light naturally decays, it gives it a little bit of a natural plinky sound rather than a harsh cutoff like an envelope generator could give you because the light has to fade off and it can't just cut directly. 
and we can increase the decay time of this LED cut with our decay here. We can add our LFO to say the fold amount here. To give us a little bit more of a dynamic sound. Now West Coast Synthesis can also use what's called the complex oscillator, where you use frequency modulation instead of a sine wave, but we're going to go into that in the next episode rather than this one. Now that we looked at this West Coast patch, which is really pretty simple, which you would throw this then into a fax or maybe another distortion processor or a filter or something like that. But I'll show you how we can make this West Coast Synthesis style with the East Coast modules. So getting rid of the low pass gate and using our filter and VCA instead. So to do that, I'm gonna unplug from the low pass gate and plug into our filter. Actually, we don't even need the VCA. We just need the low pass filter. And I'm gonna plug the gate back into our envelope generator and take our envelope and plug that into the FM input on the filter. So now when it's off and we're not getting any signal here, we don't hear anything until we turn the cutoff up because it is beyond audible range. So we have the envelope triggering our cutoff, and it does exactly the same thing as a low-pass gate, except it's just not using those Vactrols, which is the thing with low-pass gates. But there's a lot of other creative ways to get around using a low-pass gate with just a filter and an envelope generator, or an envelope generator and applying it to your fold amount on your wave folder and just totally avoiding the filter altogether. And that is the West Coast Synthesis patch, patched up with the East Coast modules. And that is part two of Intro to Modular Synthesis. Be sure to look out for part three coming in the future, where we'll talk about a little bit more complex synthesizer techniques, such as FM synthesis, ring modulation, amplitude modulation, splitting, molts, quantization, rectification, and maybe even a little logic. Until next time.